Thank you. Button. Hold on, I'm not buttoned yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Letterman. And I'd like to invite you and your family to join us tonight for what we feel will be a very special hour of television. In a matter of minutes, all the way from Lambert St. Louis International Airport in St. Louis, Missouri, via satellite, we're going to be showing you lovely pictures of luggage. Please, won't you try to watch with someone you love? Thank you. From New York, where at this point in my career, I can't go out of the house without someone coming up to me and saying, nice suit, pal. A man who sometimes is smiling to himself because he's thinking of something funny and other times because not quite enough oxygen is reaching his brain. Uh, last night, uh, I had a, a horrible dream. Here's how it goes. Ed McMahon shows up at my house. I've won, I've won the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. <laughs> he, he awards to me the giant cash prize of like a million dollars. And then he asks to use the bathroom. Oh! that guy how do you do can you hear us hello hey <laughs> who's that <laughs> no idea <laughs> after uh, this was kind of interesting uh, on the news earlier today after being arrested while an e oh, on an eastern flight from miami to new york city uh, a guy apparently was in the lavatory of the aircraft and they caught him in there with a, a supply of cocaine and a blowtorch and so the plane goes back to Miami and they arrest him and he says, well, he really can't explain the cocaine, but the blowtorch, he was trying to open a bag of those airline peanuts. So I can, I can see how that would. Where, where's the guy, Hal? There he is. There he is. Is he, is he checking up on us? Is he, uh... He's working now. He is working now. Yes. He's doing his own work. Let's Whatever see. Let's be. do the Olympic joke, Kevin. Kevin K, ladies and gentlemen, my cue card boy for the last 30 years. We've been together. <laughs> Where's that guy? Wait, do we want him on this show, that guy? Well, we do. I guess we do. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Oh, sure. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. You know, ladies and gentlemen, remember the Winter Olympics up there in Calgary a couple of weeks ago? A couple of days ago. Yes, sir, the pride is back, isn't it? <laughs> Six medals, thank you very much. Uh, anyway, there were uh, many records broken uh, up there in Canada, uh, a couple of them. The, the number of new uh, record times in speed skating uh, was one, the number of gold medals won by uh, a, one country, and I think the number of times that Dick Button said the word fabulous. <laughs> hey, hey, what a show. Oh, any place else in this country, any, any place else around the world, that would be a full show. You people would now be licking your lips thinking, yes, sir, this is... But, but no, in addition to that, we're going to show you via satellite, all the way from St. Louis, 1,003 miles west of here, you're going to get to see luggage. <laughs> yes! Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. This is a show. This is show business. Now, are we just going to see luggage, or are we actually going to see, you know, people picking up their luggage and stuff? Well, both. We're going to see some luggage, we're going to see people picking up their luggage, and also we get to chat with these people. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and this is, there they are, Lo, right there. Here comes some luggage now. This is St. Louis, then? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis Airport. St. Louis, of course, the patron saint of lost luggage. Yes. <laughs> um... But before we go to St. Louis, I have a whole ream of information here to tell you about this. Uh, this is amazing to me. You know, they say that by the end of the century, by the year 2000, the Russians will have sent a man, they will have launched a manned space flight to Mars. And what do we do with our technology? We're looking at luggage. Thank you very much. I couldn't... Uh, before we go any farther, I just want to mention something. I think the Connecticut, uh, Connecticut State Police is, is one of the finest 
<laughs> Most fair-minded law enforcement agencies working anywhere in the free world today. Isn't that nice? How about it? How I about just... It? Did you have occasion to speak to Absolutely one of these fine not. officers? Absolutely not. No. no. It just occurred to me as I was driving into work today. I see. What a wonderful, tireless job these brave men and women do daily on the roads and highways and byways of the nutmeg state, Connecticut. And I just, I just, I just wanted to salute them. So they got you again? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> Stopped you? Stopped me. 57 in a 55. I don't know. Is that a little... That's cutting things. That's shaving it down. I don't know. But they're fine, upstanding. Oh, yeah. I have nothing but the higher... And that's... And they're, they're, they're thinking, all right, next time, pal, gunplay. No, no. <laughs> I really have a great deal of admiration for these people because the, you just don't know what's out there on those roads. That's right. Yeah. So my, my hat's off to them. <laughs> you can drive me in and out of town, can't you, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> guy's got a place to go. He's got to get there, you know. Exactly. He lives... I don't know why a guy's got to live way out in Connecticut anyway. Here's, uh, kids, here's the, uh, here's the satellite information. By the way, whenever you see me do this, that means satellite info. Uh, tonight, we're using, and couldn't be more proud about this, we're using the 6E K2. It's in a geosynchronous orbit off the coast of Ecuador. No kidding. Yeah. So we're uh, bouncing the signal from here... It goes. It, go, it comes from St. Louis. St. Louis to Ecuador. To uh, 6EK2, and then Just back over down Ecuador. Here. Yeah. Uh, it's. I don't know what that distance is. We'll we'll get that information for you. It's in a geosynchronous orbit. I mentioned that. We're using transponder number 13, which is a very good. We were lucky to get that one. Uh, NBC uses eight of 16 transponders on K2. All right. That's the satellite information. Now, facts about St. Louis. Yeah. Yes. St. Louis is the largest city in Missouri. Missouri, of course, being the show-me state. Look at that. Isn't that spectacular? All the way via satellite. Is that off the satellite? No, it's not. That's just, that's just a card we got somewhere in this. Where is that? Oh, there. Oh. <laughs> I thought, geez, that's... Yeah, okay. Uh... It's also the home of Anheuser-Busch. I say this hoping to get free beer. Uh, St. Louis, of course, lies on the west bank of the Mississippi, although part of the city actually lies in Illinois, or as we say in Indiana, Illinois. This is interesting, Paul. More than 95% of the people of St. Louis and their population of 2.5 million were born in America. Isn't that interesting? All right, now here's data about the uh, airport. This is Lambert St. Louis International Airport. <laughs> they have 400 flights daily. It's the sixth busiest airport in the United States, but our research shows 12th busiest, so there's a conflict there. We don't know what that means. <laughs> they average, how many average, how many takeoff and landings do you think they average there a day, Paul? St. What Louis would you Airport? Think? St. Louis Airport. It's either the sixth or the 12th busiest in the United States. I would say uh, uh, 400 landings. <laughs> oh, Paul, you embarrass me. 1,080. Really? Busy. How many passengers a year do you think pass through St. Louis Airport? Oh, I have no idea. Take a guess. Come on. This is fun. One billion passengers. <laughs> yeah. It's a billion. <laughs> it's not 6E. It's GE. Well, how could I have said 6E? What would have caused me to say 6E? Ah. Let's, what says 6E right here? <laughs> Well, but it's not. It's GE. It's GE. It's GEK2. 20 wow. million passengers a year, Paul. Oh, 20 million. That's right. And our NBC affiliate in St. Louis, Missouri, KSKD, Channel 5. It's uh, presently cloudy, 44 degrees at the airport. Occasional rain tonight. And the cost for this little project, $20,000. You mean this evening's event? The satellite, the satellite hook up to St. Grand. Louis. Let's go now to Lambert St. Louis International Airport and look at some luggage. Paul? <laughs> How do you do? Excuse me. Hi, what is your name, ma'am? Mary Ann Bartley. Mary Ann, nice to see you. Where are you from, Mary Ann? I'm from Florida. Florida? Are you, are you returning home or, or visiting? Well, you're visiting, I guess, aren't you? Visiting, yes. Yeah, yeah. how long are you going to stay in St. Louis? I'm going to be 
here for about four days. Four days and visiting friends? Yes, I am. Uh, what do you do for a living? I train horses. I see. And uh, well, can I see your luggage, please? Excuse me. Very nice. Mar Marianne, do you have a baggage claim? Yes, I do. Could, could I see the baggage claim, please? Baggage claim. Uh, well, That's an awful lot of luggage for four days, Marianne. Well, this is like one part of many places I'm going to. Oh, where else are you going? Um, I'm going to San Diego, the Quarter Horse Convention. Hal, is there any way we could get really close up there on her purse, or is that... Uh, Marianne, what, uh, just show me the small little bag there, the one on the end of the uh, carrier. Yes, yeah, that sir. one. What do you have in there, Marianne? Books and things like that for the convention. Oh, what, now what is the convention? When is it? What is it? It's a convention. All the owners of the, the American Quarter Horse get together and, I guess, share their experiences and what's coming up in the future and... Well, share some of those experiences with us, will you? <laughs> Uh, are you familiar with the old joke, she was only the uh, cattleman's daughter, but all the horsemen knew her? Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Well, uh, who, who is the man taking your luggage away there, Marianne? Is he affiliated with the airlines? Me, Illinois. Hi, what is your name, sir? What is your name? Hi. How are you? Hello. Good. You're about to get a $20 tip. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Have a, have a nice trip, Marianne. Nice talking with us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Where did Marianne go? She ran to the parking lot. Hi. Hello. What happened? Can we go back to that gentleman there? Good. Hi. How are you? Fine, Dave. What's your name, sir? Uh, Mark McInerney. Mark, are you coming or going? I'm uh, picking up my sister-in-law. Where's she coming from? Uh, Dubuque, Iowa. Uh huh. How, how long a flight is uh, Dubuque to St. Louis? Too damn long, Dave. Yeah. I guess about an hour or so. Uh, and uh, what time does the flight arrive? Should be in about 20 minutes. Well, so you're there kind of early, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I gotta what, beat the traffic. Uh huh. What What have you been doing uh, to kill time? Not a whole lot, Dave. Just. Yeah. Uh, Kind of fiddling around out here. Uh, you know. Kind of the story of your life, eh? Well, yeah. What? What do you? What do you do? For, what do you do for a living in St. Louis? I run gambling junkets to Atlantic City. Oh my! So you uh, you know all about uh, well, I guess you know all about gambling and junkets. Yeah, I do. Uh, we work for uh, Trump's castle in Atlantic City. Oh yeah. Well, there, uh, Donald Trump is a very very good friend of mine. Is he really? Listen, I tell you what. When your sister's luggage arrives, will you please let us know? I'm I'm dreadfully interested in seeing that luggage. I sure will. You're on the satellite right now. Well, that's very impressive, Dave. <laughs> commercial. It's commercial. Oh, top ten. Sure, we'll do a top ten. Uh, all right, before... Now, see, Paul, isn't this going to be great fun? Oh, my God, there's a guy breaking in here! <laughs> um, before we uh, go back to... <laughs> Get, get out of here! Before we uh, go back to St. Louis, let's do our top ten list. Do we have time to do it? It's from the home office in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Top ten good things about General Noriega. This is the president of Panama who's been indicted for drug trafficking. Yes. Uh, top ten good things some, about General Noriega. Good things about Number ten. He always says, please pass the kneecap drill. Number nine. A uh, generous frequent flyer program on all drug smuggling flights. Number eight, offers comfort and reassurance to guilt-ridden riflemen and firing squads. Uh, number seven, sometimes gets misty listening to Julio Iglesias records. Number six, his homemade Rice Krispie squares are the hit of every brutal interrogation session. Number five, thrifty habits have allowed him to put away several billion dollars on modest soldier's salary. Uh, number four, muffles screams of torture victims after 11. Well, that's terribly thoughtful. Number three has world's largest collection of porcelain mice. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, number two never schedules public executions during Cosby Show. And number one, 
gives young people who aspire to be blood drunk lunatics something to look up to. Huh? Now, here, here's the deal. They, they have uh, 1,080 takeoff and landings a day in St. Louis, and we thought this time of night that area, the baggage claim section, would be mobbed. Jammed. Yeah, because there's, there's literally like 15 flights that come in within 15 minutes of one another. And it turns out now, because of low visibility in the St. Louis area, <laughs> very low ceiling, uh, all of the flights are being diverted to Kansas City. So in a word, kids, we're screwed blue. Thank you very much. I wondered why there was nobody there. Was there was nothing. It was two guys. We managed to talk to two guys. But you did a nice job of just pretending that it was full and just talking yeah, I know. to people. Well, I didn't realize. I thought, well, maybe, you know, people are at the snack Light bar just or about something. To come in. Or they're, uh, they're uh, busy getting to uh, white courtesy telephones. I don't know. <laughs> Look at that. There's no one there. Absolutely no one there. Yeah. Well, anyway, we'll try again later. Wow, 20 that's strange. Grand. Yeah. Uh, our first guest tonight was Venus Flytrap on WKRP in Cincinnati. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Big Shot. 20 grand, huh? Nobody out there. <laughs> That's the way it goes. It's a roll of the dice. You could have gone out to a little model airplane field and picked up about 10, 12 people. Well, you know, they, they, they wouldn't let us in any of the airports here, so we had to go to St. Louis. Oh. Uh, and we good thought, choice. well, that's just as well, but who knew the weather was going to be that way? How are things? Pretty good, I guess. Fine, fine. Yeah. Working hard. Just came back from a wonderful vacation. We were thinking about this this afternoon. Where'd you go on vacation? I went down to Caribbean. Where, 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 China? We hit all the islands. We went on a, a ship, I think it was called a Sea Goddess. Uh -huh. And it was a wonderful, wonderful cruise. I, at the end of the cruise, I thought it would be nice for them to put a little red cross on the end of it because mm -hmm. uh, quite a few of us got ill. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, ill from the food or the rocking of the no, ocean? No, the rocking of yeah. the ship. It was a small, small ship. Now, how long were you at sea? About seven days. And how many people on the ship? Maybe about 70. Really? Yep. Now, doesn't it drive you nuts after a while that everybody is swarming you to talk about uh, Frank's place and, and Simon well, and Simon and stuff? No, it wasn't that bad because most of the people had aluminum walkers. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So you had a head start, is what <laughs> you're saying. You could... No, they were very nice. It was uh, what they call an upscale sort of void. So people were... <laughs> now, what does that mean, an upscale <laughs> void? Well, it was like all suites, and people with a lot of bucks were on there, and we were kind of going, wow, this is big time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it was a lot of diamonds, and hey, I'm from Texas. But it was nice. Group. Oh, really? Yeah, nice. And, and are you comfortable with those folks? Of course, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um... What did you do before you got into, into comedy and show business? I mean, I know about your years with the comedy team. You and Tom Dreesen Tom worked Dreesen. together for a long time. Yeah. What did you do before you and Tom got together? Well, of course, I, was in, uh, I went to college and came out of college in 6 to 8 went to work for DuPont. I was a marketing representative. He called me a gunpowder salesman. Mm -hmm. Of course, we didn't sell any explosives. Yeah. I sold uh, photographs. Well, 68, that was probably not a good time to be working for DuPont, right? No, it was a very good time because they recruited me uh, in 67, actually. I got mm -hmm. the job when I was a junior, and it was, they had decided, because of the civil rights movement and everything, that, to go out and do something. So they recruited me from an all-black college, the first yeah. one. And it was real nice, although they sent me to, they didn't know where to send me. They said, well, we can't send him to Detroit. He'll be killed. Uh, <laughs> we can't send them to, to Los Angeles. We'll lose them to show business. So they picked Chicago. Yeah. And I went to Chicago and then uh, got into show business. For, but yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but you say that, but how, you, now, you, you were calling on clients trying to sell DuPont products yeah, and goods. Yeah, graphic and so art forth. stuff. And so how do you go from that to doing a comedy act? Are you joining the JCs? <laughs> <laughs> they have a stand-up program. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I didn't realize no, that. No, actually, I joined the JCs, met Tom Dreesen, yeah. and uh, we put on an, an anti-drug program. We took the elementary schools just to talk to the kids about some of the problems in school. And the kids would say, you guys are funny. You ought to be a comedy team. Yeah. And one night, we had had a couple of beers enough to realize that uh, we should give that a try. Yeah. And we tried it. But, you know, it's really interesting, and I guess it's the great thing about show business and the great thing about this country. I sound like Yakov Smirnoff here, but... <laughs> um, <clears throat> What a country. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you describe that situation, yeah. and then you take a look at the fact that in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. you have not been out of a job at all. You've been in Major League Show Business steady now for about a decade. Knock on wood. Yeah. Very lucky. Yeah. 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 Very lucky. All right, well, we'll do a commercial. All right. Hugh Wilson. Well, Hugh Wilson likes to create it, but he yeah. and I decided to work together yeah. again after five years. And, and it takes place in a restaurant in New Orleans. In New Orleans. Yeah. 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 Ba based on an actual place that you guys visited for yes. research? Yes. As a matter of fact, we went down to do some research. Unlike most situation comedy shows, which are written in the uh, polo lounge, 
We decided to go to New Orleans. Now, Tim. <laughs> Hugh said he couldn't write this one in a hot tub in Brentwood, so we got on the plane. <laughs> and we flew down to New Orleans yeah. one of our three times. And we found, we went to places that you would go look for comedy. We went to uh, restaurants, funeral homes, uh -huh. and, <laughs> and things like that, just to do some research, find some characters, yeah. and get some texture of New Orleans. Now, what, what did you find when you went to the funeral home? Uh, well, uh, not a lot of humor, yeah. but uh, we did find some characters. We went to quite a few, and, and Hugh would go in and, of course, lead in and say, Hi, we're, uh, I'm a producer from Hollywood, and we want to do a comedy show. Thought we'd come talk to you, and they'd go, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then he would stick me in front to use me as point man. Remember him? He was on KRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. So we'd go on and talk, and, and we met some characters. As a matter of fact, my wife plays a character, a mortician named Hannah Griffin. And she's based on a real-life character that exists in a, in a funeral home in New Orleans. I think it's called Rhodes Funeral Home. Uh -huh. And we went in, we saw the owner, who was uh, a, a nice, attractive young black woman, and we said, uh, let's see your embalmer. And we expect Let, let's see your what? Embalmer. Let's see your embalmer. Yeah. And we expect to see Bella Lugosi walk in. Yeah. But no, it was another beautiful young black woman. Mm -hmm. We said, wow. And he looked at me and said, Daphne. And that's how my wife got her part. You know, this funeral parlor sounds like a front for an escort service. The way, you, <laughs> the way you're describing it to me. Um, but now the, the show came on the air, and it's one of these shows that is is different enough. It's interesting to me, people always say, we'd like to see something different on television. Yeah. And then you try something different, and then it always takes people a while to catch up with it. It takes a little time. We have been uh, critically acclaimed, which is nice, but it doesn't do too much for the, uh, the Stepford meters, uh, Nielsen meters. Yeah. I lost another one. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but uh, they haven't tuned into us yet. And, yeah. But it's growing. Well, no, the show, I understand the show is doing much better now, right? It's doing They've much moved better. it to where it ought to be on a... At 9.30 <laughs> on a Tuesday evening. Yeah. Tuesday evening. yeah. yeah. And uh, we expect to pick up a nice mass appeal. Now, it's a show where you have to listen to and watch. You yeah. can't sit down and eat popcorn, talk to your, yeah. your, your friends. and, uh, and It has a very nice feel. I've seen uh, several of them. I mm -hmm. saw the one where our friend John Witherspoon yeah. played uh, the wandering guy who turned out to be a mailman. Yeah, yeah it's, it's got a real nice feel about it. Yeah, it's, again, we're going for as much reality as TV will allow, yeah. and it's Well, that's what we're doing here tonight with the luggage, too. <laughs> yeah, as you are. With we're, the... we're right on the edge here tonight. I think you would have more luck at a funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> Watching them roll out stiffs. Um, anyway, Tuesday, Tuesday night at 9.30? 9.30, starting 9 30. the 5th. 15th of uh, how long have we known each other when did we first meet was it se God, must have been 70? 76 i believe it's 70 yeah. so you introduced uh, i did a comedy album which never got to vinyl but you introduced me in the yeah, club down at the pacific beach pacific beach oh that was a great place yeah great nice time, time of my life yes yeah. we had a little condo yeah <laughs> nice to see you again Good to see you. <laughs> Tim is arriving soon where's it coming in from which, which, uh, which city? West Palm Beach. So they'll be deplaning in a matter of minutes. Mm. And then we'll go in there and we'll visit with some more folks and Sounds like talk to them plan. about their luggage. Uh, Kid Inventor is here. Oh, back to the airport. There we go. Now, does, does this look like the sixth busiest airport or the twelfth busiest airport to you, Paul? Is there a, you know, when we found out we were going to St. Louis, we contacted the, uh, the affiliate there, Channel 5 KSDK the NBC station in St. Louis, and we said, geez, it would be nice if we could have some help from you people, just maybe one or two, uh, maybe a man or a woman to, to help us out with uh, whatever problems might uh, crop up while we're there in your airport. And they said, well, no, that's, that's out of the question. <laughs> they told us they were way too busy to help with us. And uh, I understand now that uh, they're so busy, they have a camera crew out there. Is the camera crew anywhere around the uh, KSDK news team? Hal, is there any way we can find it? There, the, where that? Did I see a camera tripod there? Oh, oh this guy. <laughs> Hi. Getting ready to do live TV here. Who is this? It's JC. How are you doing? Oh, fine. How are you? <laughs> you, look, right, let's, you sound let's lose, really excited. About let's just it. lose this guy. I have no idea who this is. Lose <laughs> this guy. All right, keep moving. Keep moving. After we'll, all I now we'll let you get on with your little puppet show there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. That's it. Get out of there. Let's let's. We're waiting now for a uh, flight from Palm Beach. In a in a matter of minutes, a flight from Palm Beach. Paul, do you have any luggage or airport questions you'd like to? Uh... Yeah, I lost my luggage a while ago in St. Louis. Could you ask? Uh... No. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the uh, St. Louis airport. Hey, let's talk to this gentleman. Excuse me, sir. What? Hi, how are you? What is your name? George Holly. George, nice to see you. What do you do there at the airport? Nothing right now, but um, 
I'm waiting. I'm a baggage uh, porter, sky cap. Uh -huh. is, is normally the airport busier than it is right now, George? Yeah, it's like uh, everything's sort of numb right now, dead. Yeah. Why, why do you suppose that is? Your show. <laughs> I didn't mean that negatively. I just mean it's like, you know, like a presidential person or, you know, President Reagan's come in, everything uh -huh. is like on hold. Uh -huh. And it seems like that's the case right now. Normally, <laughs> normally things are a lot more busy. My pocket's a little better normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you live in St. Louis, George? Uh, yes, I'm a native St. Louisan. Do you like it as a town? <laughs> uh, I would hold comment on it. It's a good city, but I've always wanted to do some other things, but here I am. Yeah. What, tell me about the uh, temperature in the summer. Doesn't it get unbearably hot? Extremely so. July yeah. and August. Yeah. Really yeah. Rough. Do, do you make uh, good tips there doing what you do? Not right now, David. Yeah. Really, <laughs> really bad. Uh, we're, we're, we're waiting now on a flight from uh, Palm Beach. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. It's, uh, it's an MD-80. It's a flight 414. Is that the one you have there, George? That's the one we're waiting on. Yeah, it's supposed to get in at 448. What time is it there now? $20,000 for this. Um, all right, George, I tell you what, the second... Now, George, I want to deputize you here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The second... There is activity there at your baggage carousel. You, you, you let me know, and we'll suspend our normal programming, and we'll go right back to St. Louis. You got it. You're on, David. Right. Hey, hold on. Wait a minute. Wow. Okay. So what do we do? We'll do a commercial? Where is the flight from West Palm Beach? <laughs> Aren't you on the phone to the tower, Morty? Could, get these people cleared to land, will you? <laughs> They've been circling for hours. Put everybody else on hold, bring them in. Find some open cement and land those people. Uh, okay, we'll do a commercial and then... That almost, that almost brings a tear to my eye. That luggage is from West Palm Beach. Look at that, there it is, it's teeming now. It's, it's suddenly alive, it's a, it's a luggage jungle. Oh, apparently there was a ventriloquist on the flight. Did you see that? There's a... Hi, excuse me, sir, are you in the striped sweater? Yes, sir. Hi, what's your name? Yes, sir. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you, Mike. Are you from Florida? Uh, no, St. Louis. I see. So you're just out looting. <laughs> I guess you, can you didn't come. Are you waiting for someone? I uh, know. I went to Florida, but I'm originally from St. Louis. Oh, I see. So I misphrased the question. Well, welcome home. How was the flight? Thank you. It was fine. Very good. Very good. Very good. What, do you, what, what is your baggage uh, bag that you're looking for? It's number one two seven three. Well, wait a minute. You don't recognize your own luggage? <laughs> well, it's big and it's blue. Big yeah. and blue. All right. As soon, Mike, Mike, do me a favor. As soon as you get your bag, will you let me know? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. You're not, you're not in a hurry to get home, are you? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, I wouldn't no, think I wouldn't so. Think. Okay. Real cute. Real cute. I don't even know what that means exactly, but he's not. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, they had the uh, Boston Museum uh, Inventors Convention for uh, kids, and uh, we have some folks here tonight who participated in that. And as you can see before me, we have some of their inventions. So let's meet them now. Is there a Lindsay Silver? Lindsay, are you back there? Hi, Lindsay. Nice to see you. Now, Lindsay, this is, uh, this is a, uh, uh, an Inventor's Weekend sponsored by the Boston Museum, right? Right. And uh, was this the first time you participated? Yes. A have you always felt like you could be an inventor? No. But you gave it a try anyway? Yeah. All right. What was your idea? And then uh, show us your invention. Um, I have two. Which one do you want to Well, wherever first? you want to start, Lindsay. How old are you? Ten. Ten? All right. You ever been to St. Louis? No. Yeah. All right. So the first one is what? A breakfast. A breakfast pizza. Yes. All right, now, what is, what is the origin of that? Why, why do we need a breakfast pizza? Well, everybody likes to have pizza. Uh-huh. And now you can eat it for breakfast.
But you know, if you get up early enough in the morning and order one before like seven, you can have pizza anyway. So? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but this is a special breakfast pizza. Let's take a look at this. What's on there? Mm. <laughs> what is that? It's... <laughs> it's like a... It looks, it looks like an omelet on, on the pizza. Yeah, it's eggs, cheese, peppers, onions, and mushrooms on a pizza crust. Right, let's try a hunk, shall we? Okay. Do you want okay. To, now, do you, do you, does your mom uh, let you eat this for breakfast? Uh, yeah, I guess Slice so. up a wad there. And how, how many days a week do you have the pizza, uh, the breakfast uh, pizza? None. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, no days a week. All right, we have to, let's just, let me give, let me have a little taste of that. Okay, All right, thank ahead. you very much. Thank eat you. Up. Ooh, and it's piping hot. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Very good. Huh? Do what? Huh? Do what? Huh? What? Huh? Okay. All right, stay right there. We have to do a commercial, and then we'll look at the rest of your inventions, okay? People who have arrived from West Palm Beach and they're picking up their luggage. That's in St. Louis. Oh. It's a miracle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What's the, the next invention and then we'll get the other two kids out here. It's a musical pacifier and it's a, a pacifier that's connected to a radio mm -hmm. that's in its rough stages mm -hmm. and the baby can fall asleep mm -hmm. while listening so, to This is for infants, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And you, know, you got about 400 volts going through here? <laughs> It's in rough stages. It's, oh, it's rough stages. Yeah. But I mean, I think you'll, even you will agree that the danger of electrocution seems to be paramount here. <laughs> but, but again, it's still being worked out. Right. Right. So, so when the baby wakes up, the radio comes on? Or... No, when the baby sucks on the pacifier, the radio comes on. Oh. When the baby's... No, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stay, stay right here and let's meet the other folks. Do you know everybody here? Is it Elise Morgan back there? Elise, hi. Nice to see you. Do you know uh, Lindsay Silver here? Well, I just met her on oh, the plane. Oh, good. Nice. Well, come on in here. Come on in here. All right, show us your invention. Uh, okay, this Elise. is an envelope sealer, and it's going to seal this envelope. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's an envelope work. sealer. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. All right, so this would fit right on your desk, I guess, at home. Uh, not quite. Or, or in the spare room. So here we have the envelope. You pull it up under the sponge. Yeah, and it gets wet, and then it seals. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see how it works. First it seals. Uh -huh. First it gets wet, and it folds over. Very nice. Thanks. Very impressive. Uh -huh. have, you, have you always wanted to be an inventor? No. Do you think maybe this is something you'll pursue? No, because I wouldn't make any money. Yeah. <laughs> here, we have a little something for you. <laughs> Very nice meeting you, Elise. You kids, uh, stay right there. <laughs> is there a Jeff? Uh, how do you pronounce Jeff's last name? You met him. Faniff. Faniff? Yeah. I is Jeff that. back there? Come on out, Jeff. <laughs> trouble right here. Hi, Jeff. How are you? How do you, how do you pronounce your last name? Faniff. Faniff. All right. Yeah. Do you meet uh, Elise and Lindsay? Yeah. Very nice young ladies, don't you think? Maybe. All right. <laughs> <Yeah. Try> this. <laughs> All right, and uh, what is your invention, Jeff? It's a safety lunchbox. The no. safety lunchbox, and what does that mean? It's a lunchbox with a burger on it. It'll, like, keep your lunch safe. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you have a problem with people stealing your lunch? No, I just read a book, and the boy kept getting his lunch thrown in the box. I see. So. so you take this to school, and if somebody busts into your lunchbox, uh, the alarm goes off. Yeah. All right, show us how that works. See, there's an on-off switch on top of the handle. Uh-huh. Oh, let's see. Did we get... Okay, right there, sure. And under here, there's a uh, button mm -hmm. so it knows when it's pushed All right, let's on. see how this works. And there's another button right here. Yeah. You know, there's another way to keep kids from stealing your lunch. Punch them. Take some of this pie with you. 
Quite tasty. It's quite tasty. Switch is on. Pick it up. Jim. All right, so now I pick it up. Yeah. Here we go. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, Elise. Nice meeting you. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Nice meeting you. All right, we'll uh, one more commercial. We'll be right back. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lewis, we're going to look at some luggage now. People are actually picking up their bags. Now, where did it go? Is this it? This is the extended... Where, where, where are you guys from? Where'd you, what plane did you get off? Uh, Palm Beach. Palm Be West Palm Beach. Well, welcome to Cincinnati. We just got back from Tibet. <laughs> West Palm Beach. Were you there? In, in Tibet, we got accosted by Dalai Lama freaks, and our baggage was stolen, but then we went to Palm Beach, and it, it was... Wait, wait a minute. This is a flight that originated in Tibet to West Palm no, Beach to no, St. Louis? We went, no, we went, we went to Tibet, and then we went to Palm Beach to visit our grandparents. How, so long, were you in to, how long were you in Tibet? Two weeks. We could only stay for two weeks. That's they, how long our visa was. They stole all of our luggage. They stole all of our clothes. None of our luggage. Yes. Yes. Our, our baggage was fine. Just because the luggage was gone. I tell you what, girls, I'm going to make it up to you. Not only am I am going to buy you new luggage, I'm going to buy us new luggage? I'm going to buy you new luggage, and I'm going to rent you a car. I'll say Listen to them. They're nuts. Hey, they just, hey. what, were you drinking coffee the whole way over from Tibet? <laughs> just relax, will you? Now, have you, have you picked up your bags yet? Yeah, not yet. What? We still have one that we need. You have one that you need. What is your name, ma'am? Alexa. Alexa? Alexa? And who, yeah. is your, who is your friend there? Me? I'm yeah. Ginger. What did she say? <laughs> Ginger. Yikes. Yeah, well... I really don't care about you, sir, but thank you anyway. All right, now, now when your luggage, let's take a look at the luggage. What do you, i tell you what, what do you guys get on this thing and ride around on there a little bit? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh a couple of weeks in Tibet seeking spiritual guidance, and this is what happens. Uh, you, ooh, oh, my. Well. well, all right, good luck. Thank you very much. Nice talking with you. I hope you... Uh... All right. uh, I want to thank uh, everybody who was here. I'm sorry uh, we ran out of time for uh, Carol Leifer, but we'll have her back very soon. for a $1,000 loan. Uh, women who love men too much. Uh, should people who commit a crime have to reimburse the family that they've committed the crime against directly in cash? Uh, people who subscribe to airline magazines. Uh, oh, and, and why do waiters in restaurants uh, always seem to have to introduce themselves? I like these very much. Great, great. Thank you. Here's sure. your $100. Oh, thank you, and Phil. Let me know if you think of anything else. Anytime. See you now. Don't be a stranger. It's a stolen car. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Paul Shaver and the world's most dangerous man. And now, a man who called me last night pretending to be that little short guy on Fantasy Island. <laughs> what a con. David!
there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Hi. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Oh, boy. Uh, I uh, had a great evening last night. I do this once a year. I, I went up the uh, river to uh, address the cadets at West Point uh, on the importance... Yeah. Every year I do this, and uh, on the importance of cutting down on sweets, and they really seem to... Hey, how you doing? Nice. I don't know what's going on today. Today, John Tower confessed that he once killed a guy in a poker game <laughs> and used to hold up 7-Eleven stores. So you... Uh, yesterday, John Tower also said that he thought the uh, Secretary of Defense uh, should have higher moral standards than those of a United States senator. <laughs> well, <laughs> a pimp should have higher standards than a U.S. Senator. You know, kids, boys and girls, and moms and dads, I, I worry about the leadership of this country. Company, country, company. A couple of years ago, General Electric, this uh, international conglomerate, purchased NBC. And uh, the guy who runs the broadcast division, I guess, he's the president of NBC. Is that right, uh, Morty? Uh, Excuse I, me? I was checking No, out no, no, no I, sense I, in I paying attention joke. now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, there's a smudge on I the know. Legs. You're still groggy from your nap. Well, no, no. God. <laughs> Paul, you're not paying attention either. I'm working. I'm working. Uh, anyway, uh, Robert Wright is the uh, General Electric guy who runs uh, the network. And earlier today in the commissary, I see him running around in the commissary going crazy like a little kid. He's got a mouse trap on his nose. And he's screaming, hey, look, everybody, I'm Shemp. I'm Shemp. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we are back at the show. Uh, the Neville Brothers is here tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I feel rotten. What's the matter? Just, well, I got one of those colds that, you know, just yeah. really wells up in the back of your They're sinuses. Awful. Now, this is the first up. time you've had a cold all year, isn't it? Four years since I've had a cold. Four years. Yeah. And, and do you have a fever? Running a fever, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just, I'm telling you, no. But I feel, I'm one, it's glad to be here. And uh, <laughs> the way I look at it, one hour and I'll be back in bed. Well, don't, don't, uh, don't overdo it. No. That's what you do. When you, when you have a cold or yeah. the flu, uh, don't overdo it. And the same thing applies, by the way, when shoveling snow. Let me just pass this along. If you live in a part of the country where you get a lot of snow in the winter and you're shoveling your driveway, your walk, whatever, don't overdo don't it. Don't overdo it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll remember that. It's good advice. Thank you very much. How are you feeling? I feel great. I'm good. in the top physical condition of my life. Yes. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for tonight's comedy presentation. Uh -huh. Thank you. And tonight's comedy presentation is a quiz about this wonderful city from which our program originates each evening. New, New York, York City. City. That's right. Do you have a little theme here or not? Of course. All right. <laughs> All right. It's, it's a quiz. He's delirious from the fever. It's a quiz about New York. Here we go. Our first New York. Number two. These Japanese visitors are happy because, A, they've seen a Broadway show. Uh, B, they've just enjoyed a gourmet meal. C, they've just closed the deal for Central Park. <laughs> Number three, uh, the chicken sold from this van is fried in A, beef fat, B, corn oil, C, 10W40. I think we all saw that one coming up 6th yeah. Avenue, didn't we? <laughs> Some 
kind of parade, obviously. Uh, number four, this obvious uh, group of uh, tourists will soon be A, climbing the stairs in the Statue of Liberty, uh, B, visiting the Empire State Building, C, jostled, mocked, and robbed. <laughs> Jostled, mocked, and robbed, Paul. <clears throat> don't, don't overdo it. Uh, locals recognize this place as A, an alternative to banks. B, convenient to neighborhood residents. C, the scene of the Mike Tyson, Robin Gibbons first date. Wow, that one, that one cleared the uh, skyline. Yes. Nice. Uh, number six, uh, this man's headgear indicates uh, A, that he is a Hindu, uh, B, he is a Muslim, uh, C, he is about to enjoy a warm, fresh batch of Jiffy Pop. You know what? Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this, Dave. Let me say something. You know, you, you could have made a Salman Rushdie joke on that mm -hmm. one, but you mm -hmm. didn't, and I applaud you, sir, for that. For the strength. Thank you very Yo! much. Yo! Okay. Do. Letter number seven. No, these aren't. We're not doing viewer mail, are we? No, no. <laughs> I'm confused by the blue cards. I, I thought see. it was viewer mail. This is nothing like viewer mail. This no. is a uh, New York City quiz. Quiz. Yeah, Chiron that's quiz. That's right. Uh, number seven, uh, this sign translates as A, fine jewelry for sale, B, we accept traveler's checks, C, Steinbrenner sucks. <laughs> uh, number eight, for those of you who are interested, uh, this man's bank card number is 86525. That's 86525. Uh, number nine, these people are just coming from A, an antique sale, B, an upholsterer, C, my house. <laughs> and finally, number 10, how are we doing? Oh, good? All right. Uh, as he gazes at a statue of George Washington, this young man thinks to himself, A, truly, he was the father of our country. B, it is a blessing to live in the land of liberty. C, nice butt. Well, that concludes tonight's comedy presentation. I'm... I'm really impressed by something. Earlier tonight, I was trying to talk to our producer, Robert Morton, yeah. and he was busy, he was distracted, and now he tells me he was distracted because, what, Robert, there was a smudge on the lens here on camera one? On the lens of the camera. Smudge on the lens here on camera one. So, and this, this camera represents what? The lens is like $50,000, the camera itself is like $100,000? What are we talking about? Yeah. Am I close on these figures? Yes, very close. Like $150,000 worth of equipment right there. So, a few minutes ago, to clean the smudge off the lens, what do you think they used? Some kind of special lens tissue or paper? No, Johnny used the inside of his jacket. <laughs> he did this. This is, this is how we clean the cameras here. <laughs> Smudge or something. You get that smudge right off. Hey, look at this, Paul. Paul, look at this. Yeah. Oh. Our, fir oh, our first guest Thank tonight you. is a lovely boy, is she ever. This woman seems to get better looking each time I see her. And talented. She seems yeah. to get more and more talented each time I see her. Uh, we're, we're always happy that she comes to visit us uh, when she's here. Uh, her new comedy mystery film, which seems to get more and more mysterious each time she's here, uh, is called Out Cold, and it opens tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a beautiful human being, the lovely Terry Garr. Terry? Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> How you doing? 
You look terrific. Thanks, Dave. And, I, and I, we should point out, Academy Award nominated Terry Garr from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a couple of years ago, but let's bring it up. But but many actresses li live and die never having been nominated for anything, and you've you've got the were nominated for the the highest uh, award in your field. That's true, and yeah. I, I'm going to do it again to one of these days. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Were you now? Were you? Uh, you must be very tired because I know I'm told you were up this morning to be on uh, Good Morning America. Yes, I was. Did you enjoy that? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> What time did you get up? Four. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I know. Then I had to jog around the park about 16 times. What did they talk to you about on Good Morning? And by the way, I don't see David Hartman on there as much as I used to. You know, I don't think he's on that show anymore. Is he on assignment or something? <laughs> yeah. He's in Japan. He's in Japan? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I see. Working on a story then, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. So who, who did you talk to on the program? Joan London. Yeah, she's there. lovely. Yes, yeah. she's very, very nice. What'd she have to say? Mm, I don't know. We talked about this movie that I have coming out. I plugged my movie. That's mm -hmm. not here for. Sold the... out is the movie? <laughs> no. What's no. the movie? It's called Out Cold. Oh, Out Cold. I'm not sorry. even close. <laughs> Sold out. <laughs> You know, it's pathetic. I, you know, it's unbelievable. You're one of those hosts that never sees any movie that a person comes to plug, that never reads any book that a person comes, to, and you just sort of guess and make conversation, but it's very nice. Yeah, well, you do it very well. Thanks, honey. Now... <clears throat> don't uh, honey me. What? I'm sorry? Don't call me honey, okay? I'm sorry. It's kind of a sexist... I I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I didn't. I just meant it as more of a friendly term. I know. Yeah. So also on the show this morning, uh, they were interviewing this guy, Earl Morris. Do you know who he is? Yes, I do know and who he is. He, uh, he was on this show. He was? Yeah, years and years ago. So he's a very interesting He's guy. an interesting documentary filmmaker. It's all cinema verite, isn't it? That kind of thing. Well, did you see his movie, The Thin Blue Line? Mm -mm. You didn't? No, I saw. <laughs> Have you ever seen a movie in your life? <laughs> ever? Yeah, did you see Gone to, with the Wind? I go to, yeah, I've seen okay. Gone with I go to plenty of movies. I don't think so. No, I do. do? Ax me, quiz me. Ax me. Okay, I suppose you saw um, Cheerleaders from Hell or something no. like that. No. You didn't no, see that one? I didn't see that one. Now you're making a mockery of this whole uh, proceeding. I'm sorry, no. I'm sorry. Excuse uh, me. I saw Jaws. <laughs> Did you? Back in 76? Yeah. Oh, very good. I enjoyed it. And I'm thinking about renting it. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> it works very well, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Earl good Morris. Idea. Earl Morris uh, did this uh, film about this small town in Florida, I think, and, and uh, I can remember seeing footage of a, it was a group of people who lived in this small community, and one of the, the studies of this film was a man who hunted wild turkeys, and it was very, very interesting. Well, I just um, read this uh, article about him, mm -hmm. the, a profile in The New Yorker, and what he likes to do when he does these documentaries is he just puts the camera on people and he lets them start talking. You know, right. He lets them start talking until they hang themselves. That's it's kind right. of like what you do to people no. here. And, but it, but it always something interesting comes out. But the movie Thin Blue Line is about some true story about a murder, and it's quite incredible. Mm -hmm. And I wish it was up for an Academy Award Best Movie, but it isn't. Well, it would be in the documentary uh, division, No, it? it's a movie because it has actors and it has, uh, you know, people... Oh, oh it's, it's not a documentary. Well, it's kind of a documentary, but it's a very important movie because it's about the justice system. I'm sorry there's nothing too much funny about this. Yeah, Let's yeah. talk about something funny. Okay, go okay. ahead. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, now that I... Oh, you're not... house hunting, is that true? No, I'm not. You... No, I'm not. I went with Robert Morton today and looked at some apartments with him. He's looking Oh, for... no wonder he's exhausted. <laughs> um... And are you looking for a new place in town? Did you listen to the answer I just gave you? You said... I am not looking for an apartment. I went with my friend to look at apartments today. Who's, now, who's looking for the apartment, you or him? Robert Morton is. Is that right? You're looking for an apartment? Oh, God. Jeez. Oh, he's should... on the phone. Never mind. Yeah, we can't. Don't bother him. Yeah, he's talking to his broker now. <laughs> uh, huh. So then you're not moving. No, Dave. I went with uh, Robert to look. This I is a see. very interesting conversation. No, it's fine. Everything's it? fine. Don't worry. Okay, We're... I'm not worried. It's your show. Much of this, <laughs> much of this will be edited out. Now, you uh, say and and the film that you're in now, the uh... mm -hmm. out cold. Right, right. <laughs> Sold out cold, if yeah, you wish. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well. You know, uh, it's about this woman that, uh, myself, I play the woman, who murders her husband and then blames it on his partner and then murders him. See, I shouldn't tell you the whole plot, but... Why it's not? Big... I'm not going to go see it. Uh, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> it's, just, it's just a little joke. It's only a little joke. <laughs> little is right. Tiny little joke. Tiny little joke. Yeah. Well, anyway... Hold that. We'll still commercial. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right.
tomorrow. We'll be right back here with the lovely... <laughs> The Neville brothers are here tonight. It's on in the Orinoco. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. While you were out looking at apartments, he was looking for a passage between the Orinoco and the Amazon. How's your mom? Fine, thank you. Is she doing good? She's fine. Does she ever ask about me? Often, often. You know, I feel like I've met your mother, but I don't think I ever have. She actually saw your special and wanted me to tell you that she liked it very well, much. It's well, the tell only her, time I, she's ever watched it. Well, I appreciate it. that and tell her thank you for me. Are you living in a, a sensory deprivation tank in Midtown Manhattan? <laughs> no, no. I heard you were. No, How I'm... long can you stay in one of those things, like two weeks ago? No, I'm not. You're making this up. You're, I am not you're, making this you're up. You're being snide now. One of the apartment people said, this is where Letterman lives in this sensory deprivation tank. No. In the 50s, no? no okay, no. I'm, I made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, but now, t is your mom retired? Why do we ha Yes, she is. But I think, uh, tell, tell your folks, uh, tell the folks what your mom used to do then. Why? Well, it's interesting. My mother used to be a dancer. Right. Why do you want to do well, this? Well, I think that you come from a show business family. I think yes. people enjoy mm -hmm. hearing that. Mm -hmm. And your father was a comedian. An act, yes, an yeah. actor comedian. So that's nice, like isn't yourself. it? Like yourself. Well, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you have brothers and sisters? Yes. Older, younger? Older. Yeah. What do they do? One of them is a, a surgeon, and one of them is a... A surgeon? Really? Yeah. What kind? Orthopedic. Wow. He's an orthopedic brain surgeon. <laughs> no, no, not really, not really. He's an orthopedic surgeon. That's pretty cute, though. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and you have a sister, you said? No, I have another brother. Two brothers, all right. Yeah, I want to see He's a do. boat builder. He's a uh, boat builder. See, this is great. It's fabulous. Are you kidding? Yeah. No, that's a real interesting oh. family. Is How it... often do you guys get together? Mm, just in the holidays. Yeah. What about you? You got these sisters that live in uh, different parts of the country? Yes, I do. They're married with kids, and they're no. different from you. Well, yes, they would. <laughs> Pretty much have to be different from they're me normal, being, though, being right? sisters and all. Yeah. Um, no, they're uh, uh, one is married, one is not married. But now I understand we have a clip from your new movie, Cold Cuts. So if you're, <laughs> is, it, is it ready to go? All right, let's uh, let's take a look at it here. Terry, yeah, tell the folks who's going to be in it. Well, I don't. Uh... What are we going to see? Elizabeth Taylor and uh, <laughs> Richard Burton. What are you talking about? Tell them about the clip here. Oh, well, see, this is the thing. I don't know what it is. But as soon as I see it, I'll know. But the, you, you, you play the woman who, who murders the folks. Well, maybe. maybe. I do. Okay. Here is a, a couple of seconds uh, from uh, Terry's brand new film, Watch Closely. Wow. Wow. It's a... Is it, is, it, is it a funny movie or just a, a real uh, mystery, uh, edge of your seat kind of thing? It's what we call a black comedy. Black comedy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of me murdering everyone. It's not How many people do you murder in the film? Well, I'm not going to say. Maybe I don't murder any, anybody because mm -hmm. then I'll give away the whole Does thing. Does it have kind of a surprise twist at the end? Very. I was surprised myself and I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you, how long are you going to be in town? What's it to you? I'm just, I'm just making polite comments. Have you lost weight? You look great. You look like you've dropped some weight. Have you dropped some yeah, Maybe I have. Yeah. I yeah. guess I have. But you look very fit. Have you, know, you been I working think this out? Is, yes. I think it's very good of you to, to just ask questions like this because some of the questions you don't like, they didn't work for you. So you just ask about my family and have I lost weight. It's very, very kind of spontaneous of you. Well, is that good? Well, it's not necessarily see, I... good or bad. It's just that it's... It's, uh, it's only television. It's only television. Yeah. But see, I'm concerned about your mother. I like your mother, oh. even though I don't know her. So I would naturally... I always try to ask about your mom. Terry? Yes, yeah. Dave. Uh, so, so how long are you going to be in town? Well, I, you know, I'm not going to be following you home or anything. But just tell me how long you're going to be in town. I don't think I'm going no, to. No, come on. How long will you be in town? I'm not telling. It's one of these things I think I'll stick with. Like Labor I'm... Day. Will you be here till Labor Day? I don't know. Ask me something else. Through the, Ask me something through else. the spring, will you be here? The spring now. Through the weekend. What's it, what's it to you? Well, it's, really? I just, I think that it, it only, I mean, why? Why can't you tell me how, I mean, I'll tell you how long I'm going to be in town. How long are you going to be in town? For a long, long I time. <laughs> okay, me I too. Don't, I don't a have long, anywhere else to long go. Time. Well, then maybe we can get together and do something. Well, maybe. What? Maybe. All right. You want to hang around like you usually do? Very much my favorite group is the Neville Brothers. Oh, well, then by all means, hang around. They have the... Uh... Hi, welcome back to the program.
photograph. No, I didn't. Watch this. Anton. Fabulous. Now, are you glad you stayed? Yeah, okay. now I am. Uh, coming from between the uh, Amazon and the Orinoco. You think he's an Irish guy? No, I think he's, uh, no, I don't, is he? Red O'Hanlon? Well, I guess he is. I <laughs> uh, also, uh, and that's it for tonight. Now, let's uh, do our top ten list. Tonight's category from the home office in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. People up there with a road atlas. <laughs> uh, from the home office in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, top ten Boston Red Sox team rules. You want to try this one? No, I don't. Are you sure? You don't want to try the top ten list? Okay. Only, only a handful of people beside myself have ever done one of these. Really? Would you like to try one? I may fail, Dave, but I will no, try. I think you can handle this. There you go. So you just start from ten and work your way up. I see. All right, announce the category again. The, uh... Don't screw it up. Oh, God. <laughs> the top ten Boston Red Sox team rules. Number, number ten. Is it, is it? Just keep going. And, oh, by the way, don't overdo it. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll go way under. Okay, way under. All right. Okay, number ten. During team orgies, players must stick to batting order. Yeah! Don't laugh. Good one. Number nine, you know, I had no idea this no, was going to be nine. so... Go ahead, so number nine. Misogynist. Okay, number nine, do not bring mistress to ballpark on camera night. <laughs> number eight, oh, this is cute. Pine tar to be used on bats only. <laughs> this is horrible. Well, number, see, number seven, married men must prove they are traveling with more than one girlfriend to get extra game tickets. You see, now they, they've, they've had some trouble. They've had yeah, some internal oh, see, trouble up there with Wade Boggs and I so see. forth. That's, that, that's the okay. uh, reason for all of this. Number six, all team members must wear protective equipment. <laughs> that's funny, I don't know. We have to be done by 1.30. Okay, okay, number five, team player, no, wait a minute. Players batting under 300 are forbidden to cheat on their wives. But the rest of them can, I guess. I don't yeah, know. That's right. Okay. Um, number four, when number writing autobiography, do not blasphemy Allah. Yeah. Uh-oh. I don't even think I should have said that. I'm scared. Okay, number three, girlfriends must sign out catcher's mask and shin guards. Oh, pick it up a little bit. Okay, Just two, pick it up a little bit. all five team league batting champions should keep their mouths shut for a while. Boggs. Oh, I guess I screwed that up pretty good. No, that was perfect, honey. <laughs> Right, okay. One little mistake, but everything else has been okay. fine. Okay. Here we go. Number one. Number one. Number one is choke up on it. <laughs> well. This should be pretty exciting, Paul. Yeah. Pay attention here. Uh, our next guest spent four months living amidst vermin, parasites, and violent and ugly people. No, he didn't move in with Bill Wendell. <laughs> uh, this man traveled between the Orinoco and the Amazon rivers in Colombia and Brazil. And uh, this is an account of uh, those adventures. It's uh, called In Trouble Again. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Redmond O'Hanlon. Pleasure to see you. How are you? Thanks for being here. Uh, now, before we talk about this trip, I understand yesterday we were chatting about something else in your appearance on the show, and it was mentioned, called to my attention, that you actually know Salman Rushdie. Is that true? Poor man. Yes, I do. You actually know him? You're, you're... I was there just after he got the edict, and he was very pale. None of us really believed it. Uh -huh. it was a... How did the During information Chatwin's get to him? During memorial service. I have no idea. Uh -huh. I mean, things happen so fast. And he was very pale, and I was looking at the back of his head in this Greek cathedral, and the veins going... Yeah. And, thought, <laughs> and right at the end, the patriarchs have disappeared, swinging a sensor, disappeared behind some stable door, and Paul Theroux, who's sitting next to me, leant forward and tapped Salmon on the shoulder and said, 
you next salmon. Oh, back here oh. next week. I mean, oh. We still thought it was almost a joke. Yeah, it's not. It's outside, not a joke, though, is no, it at all? Outside on the cathedral steps, I suddenly realised I was the only person talking to him. Mm -hmm. Everybody said, "Well, Salmon, um, yeah, must get off the next." <laughs> uh, but yeah, got and the special to do. branch. We're looking at the rooftops. This yeah. peaceful London seat, and the car drew up, and they bustled him into it. And I thought he'll jump every time the cat flap bangs. The man's his how long, whole how life. Long, is how real. long have you known him? Oh, about uh, six years, I suppose. All right. Uh, anyway, let's get to uh, the trip here. I'm going to hold this map up, and uh, because I, I didn't realize that that's where the Orinoco was. Well, and uh, as you put it so well, the back passage from the Orinoco to the Amazon, it runs around this area here. Uh -huh. But there is a big canal, the Casiquiare, it connects them. But I wasn't looking for that. Uh -huh. And what was the purpose of the journey? Why did you decide to do this? I mean, have others gone there before? I guess they have, of course. In the 17th century, mm -hmm. apparently. Yeah, but, but not, not since. If I had found it, it would have been a wonderful coup. But I've never found anything I'm looking for. <laughs> and I was in a state of such terror before I went. Yeah. And I wasn't frightened of the anaconda or the jaguar, which bites you, kills you the bite to the head. And when, or what even, is it that bites you the, the head? A jaguar. Oh, yeah, a jaguar. It's the only cat yeah. that does that. Yeah. And I couldn't, for a long time, I couldn't work out why the Indians slept with their heads towards the fire and their feet on the outside. And then I twigged. Uh -huh. I turned around. And it wasn't the Yanomami who meant to be the fiercest people on Earth. And it what are you saying? Little... What, do you, what is the name of the group? The tribe? The Yanomami. Yanomami? They, yeah. Yeah. They beat each other over the head with long poles and mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> same sort of things, yeah. And, and how, how many people are in? It's a tribe of people? How many uh, people? About 20,000. They live in little groups. Are they and all 30, over 30% the... of the men die in combat between tribes. Yeah. And if I, if I wanted your wife, I'd bow my head at you. Uh -huh. And you take a 10-foot long pole and you hit me over the head as hard as you can with it. And then I'm allowed to hit you. Yeah. And then, uh, don't they have the, board no, games or first, anything? They, can, <laughs> no, yeah. uh, they but, don't sort it out like that. Now, if you and I but it were, wasn't, it really wasn't even them who worried me. It's mm -hmm. a little tiny, tiny fish. And if you're swimming in the river and you've had too much to drink or a big cigar, and you <laughs> take a pee, this little fish goes, and it swims straight up the stream of urine, and it goes into the penis, up the urethra, sticks six spines out on either side, and it does a half turn. And you have to get to hospital very quickly. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Just has to come off. And I... Hmm. Ever seen this? <laughs> and, uh... Now... Now no, that's, no. that's not true, it, is nobody, it? Yeah, is that true? Exactly, not true. That's, that's what everybody thought, and I talked about it on a small television show in England. <laughs> and there were a couple of fish scientists watching, uh -huh. and they thought, what nonsense. And they went off on a big expedition to Maracá <laughs> Island in Brazil. And in their spare time, they put a net across the river. Mm -hmm. And in these big brown, swollen rivers, the fish is everywhere, it's swarming yeah. with them. And they're plugged into all the catfish and up its gills. And how big and are in the they? They're just, they're just well, tiny it little... just so happens that... Oh, no, no, you, no. Oh, yeah, if you open this box, this will be a Letterman exclusive. This will be its first appearance in the new world. There's, there's uh, one in here? on television, yeah. Paul, would you come over here and open this for me? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> now, obviously, it's not alive, is it? No, no. <laughs> it's well dead, but it's a pregnant female. Uh -huh. That's it. It happens that way. You pick it ooh, up. Ooh, ooh. Well, yeah, now I'm... Well, there is something in there. I'll... Oh, God. Yeah. Can you see that? Maybe it's too small for you, yeah. Yeah, but for a normal man. <laughs> well, I thought... See, I thought... I'd fool it. Yeah. Yeah. And I took a cricket box, put a <laughs> tea strainer on the front. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, that's yeah. just great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is is the jungle in this area disappearing? Are no, they, it's not. It's no, not disappearing. Not is there part of the jungle in the South America and Brazil and so forth that's being just dug yes, up and charted? and much, well, more uh, serious than that. Way to the south of the area that I was in, which is completely unexplored, this particular bit. And indeed, when climbing Neblina, which is the highest mountain outside the Andes, wasn't discovered until 1953. Shows you how wild this area is. You just look out, it goes on forever. Yeah. And looking for the Yanomami in it, I got so anxious. I need an end to this book. And eventually, we found them. And was the most wonderful experience for a bit and then terrace it in. But to the south of their lands, in Brazil, 
um, not exactly where the jungle is being cut down, but the government have just six months ago, they took out two medical teams and they've released 20,000 gold prospectors with shotguns and let them in there. The animal may just be hunted through the jungle mm -hmm. and shot like wild animals. If I were to go into this area with you, would I be uh, surprised at the amount of different tribes down there or are they uh, rare and scarce and unusual? The Anamami, yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, many more difficult. than I would? No, how difficult they are to find. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Yes. And how and many the, diff... Lots of tribes have been in contact with the Spanish, the Curipaco and the Barre. Uh -huh. They just... Uh, I don't know any, what any no, of this No, they're not means. pleased to see you because they have a great oral tradition of how badly they've been treated. Yeah. And, and very, very primitive. Well, you think you've walked into the Stone Age in some ways yeah. when you first meet the Anamami. When I first met them, I crawled through the Shibono opening, looked up, first thing I saw, these six-foot-long arrows looking up this great shaft of the arrow. And I was actually thinking, how wonderful. These are the right people. They've right. got the wedge-shaped man-killing tips on the end of these mm -hmm. arrows, exactly as Shagnon <laughs> describes. My head was full of American anthropology. And then I looked up a bit higher, and they got their penises tied up with string around their stomachs. <laughs> so I thought, this is, this is the real thing. And they were completely impassive looking at me. And then they, re they recognized my guy. Mm -hmm. Then I was beaten up by an old woman. And then I thought, this... You're this making all this up, no, aren't not. you? This hasn't affected me at all. And then I put my hand up, and there's a little tickle on my neck, and then I thought I was going to faint. I recognize this thing. You have, you have another, yeah, yeah, another thing here. Okay, let, it in my we have to do a commercial, and then right. we'll, we'll come back here with Redmond O'Hanna. <laughs> A killing insect? This is a terrible thing. This falls on your head out of the thatch. Uh -huh. It gives you something called Shagger's disease. Now, it's not the Letterman Manhattan Shagger's disease, not what you're thinking. It, it goes for the muscles Looks of the like heart. It's like a small piece of spinach. Are you sure this isn't lunch? No, no, no. That's the bit that does it. Uh -huh. I clapped it in the notebook. And it, and it uh, nearly bit you or did bite you? No, it, it just tickled my neck. I pulled it off just in time. But there's or no you would cure. would have been dead then? Yeah, no, from one year to 20. Yeah. It then, goes for the muscles of the heart. It's oh, very good thing. heavens. Good heavens. It's bruised you... in your liver and the tripanosome comes out. It just eats the muscles of your you heart. You should stay home. Well. <laughs> nice.